What's happening YouTube? Thanks for tuning back into another episode with the Rust Belt Mechanic. So we got big old Dirty Max back in the shop. It's time to have this thing go under the knife. We've got all kinds of really cool parts coming in for this thing. So I'm actually gonna be splitting these up into a couple of really cool videos, but this one I am actually going to focus on cab removal. It's one of those things where you've heard all these technicians talking about how much extra room there is for working on these things once you get the cab off. So I have been looking around and there's no videos for taking the cabs off of these things. So I personally have not done it myself before, but you know what, we're gonna learn all at the same time as we go along. Hopefully I'll be able to get you some tips and tricks on getting these cabs off and hopefully it won't take too much effort. Let's get into it. First thing we're gonna do, we gotta get our emergency brake cable off because the emergency brake cable obviously goes with the cab and the back part goes with the back. So what I do is I've kind of clamped up the rear, pull the front, you can see there, and had that kind of pinched with a pair of pliers. And then all I do is take a pair of uh, flatten it, flat uh, pry bar, yeah. <laughs> and then pry that apart and be able to pull your e-brake cable up. And then we can release that and then be able to pull it back up through so it'll go up with the cab. Next cable we're gonna free is gonna be our transmission shift cable. So all you're gonna do is take a little uh, pry bar and pry that one out. And then you can see the little metal clip right there. We're gonna pry that metal clip out this way, pinch the two little tangs together to get the cable out from the actual transmission. Then we're just gonna kinda see if we can see it back here. You can see where it wraps up around this area and then we're gonna get it free from our frame and it'll be able to go up with our cab. It's right there. Now we come around and we're gonna get our fender liners out because there's a whole lot we need to get to inside both sides of fender wells. We're gonna start off with the passenger side. So once we're kind of into the belly of the beast here, we've got a couple of different things that we're going to be doing. Uh, one is going to be taking loose the bracket that goes between the frame and the front bumper here. And then we've also got our intercooler hose to get off right there. We've got our lower radiator hose that we'll need to get off right there. Then we're going to need to uh, eventually get up top and evacuate some of our Freon out to be able to get our lines off of that one. Once you get the intercooler pipe off, there's going to be some trans cooler hoses in between, in behind that portion. So we're going to have to get the trans cooler lines off of the radiator as well. Uh, because those go back onto the transmission and then the radiator and stuff is going to be going up with the body. That one's right now. There's the one hose right here on the bottom of the coolant reservoir. You'll want to make sure you take that off as well. So we got the top cover off, pulled the grill out because, you know, I'm not going to go through every single little bit on this. If you guys haven't had those parts out before, I'm sure there's a million videos on that. We got our trans cooler lines here that we need to uh, get off as well. Pull that one, pull those down through, and then we'll start getting our AC lines off our compressor. One will come this way, the other one will kind of fold up into the cowl up there. Now we took the bumper off. I know it was, uh, you know, kind of quick on that one. We took the brackets off like I showed you earlier. And then from above, there's two 15 millimeter bolts. You take each of those out on either side and the bumper literally just slides back towards you. Make sure, you, of course, you unhook your fog light connectors as well and then over on the driver's side it looks like a big old mess but 
Back in here, we took our steering shaft off. Another thing I might have started off with at the beginning is um, unhook your batteries, both of them, just to make sure you're not doing anything else stupid with the wiring. Uh, make sure you unhook those, and then we're all going to, like I said earlier, evacuate the AC system down as well. We got our lines hooked up here to get our Freon evacuated. So we're gonna get that going here with the machine. While we're up here on this side, we're gonna be wanting to take our um, intercooler piping off and we can get to the top portion right here. And then we're gonna start taking off the coolant hoses from the bottle, start getting our shroud and everything off from the upper side of our fan as well, and getting any of the wiring that seems to be hanging along the body on this side also taken kind of loose. No, I'm sorry, we're kind of moving fast here, guys. I'm just trying to, you know, do all this work like I'm used to being uh, paid on flat rate and trying to get it done at the same time. So we took our AC lines off from our compressor, put the bolts back in so they can stay there, and now we're going to be taking our shroud off, 113, 113, and the two halves will split. There's two push pins down there, and do a light here, and there's two push pins right there. I think also one of the other hardest things you guys are going to find is trying to figure out what kind of aftermarket accessories you guys have hooked up because you know you Duramax guys, you guys all have a bunch of stuff like for me I have amp power steps so I've got to kind of navigate and find out where the harness was ran. I personally didn't put that one on so we see we got that line hanging up there and then all of that down towards the bottom is going to stay up with the cab and then follow it on over to the controller right here. So I'm just gonna have to find out and unhook where the controller and the rest of the power supply go to and unhook that one. Now, up here up top, we're also gonna be needing to unhook our hot side pipe. That one will come out there and we'll unhook it down underneath as well. We're gonna take off our upper radiator hose to go over to that part. And then we're gonna be needing to finagle out a lot of our battery and accessories that's hooked up to um, up around here and to the PDC as well. We're going to need to unhook our main engine harnesses, one and two, right there. And then uh, kind of finagling through, we'll see what else we run into from there. Yeah, I know it looks like a mess, but we are making progress here, guys, promise. So this was the harness that went across the whole front side of the motor. Uh, the harness went all the way across, doo -doo 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 -doo, and went over to the alternator to a couple of our sensors down in there, and it actually wrapped up around, went to the AC uh, little ports over there, and the low coolant temp or the low coolant level sensor on the bottle also. So that whole harness got brought over, folded over. That will stay up with the body. And then there is one little cable going down. That'll be a ground cable going down to the uh, lower part of the block. You're gonna have to get that one off to bring up the rest of that cable right there. Also took off our fuel lines right there because uh, also one of the cables that we had to take off was for our glow plug module. So we got our lines taken off the fuel lines and then we've got to get them also taken loose from the brackets, which is, you know, there and there. We'll get those loose because the fuel lines go uh, down with the rail. Uh, hot side pipe is off, so that means we took out our inner fender on this side. I know you guys know how to do that one already, so now we'll kind of go look down into that other side of the fender as well. There's a ground strap right behind where the bumper was at, one 10 millimeter bolt. We'll take that one out. No, it's kind of hard to follow and show because of all my extra aftermarket wiring stuff for the air dog and all, but we unbolted all of the connectors from underneath there, started unhooking all of the wiring so that all of the harness wiring that came across the engine and then hooked it down into the bottom of the PDC there, uh, we ended up un unhooking everything we possibly could to where it would then just kind of fall down and sit down in our wheel well. Everything that went from, it also goes to the PCM, unhooking it there, the wiring that we had on our 
Artesium, which was on our fan shroud. We unhooked that one and then all of our other little cables and stuff that were kind of pressed down onto the base of the uh, PDC station. So now we've got all of the wiring on this side taken care of. Now we're gonna go and focus on getting our HydroBoost stuff off. We've got to take off the two bolts, one nut there that holds the uh, brake master cylinder to the hydro boost unit and one on the other side as well so then we can just pull that back and then we're going to take off our power steering lines from the hydro boost as well got the one clamp on the return and the 16 mil on the uh, pressure side on that one there and we will get those off so then the hydro boost will kind of just hang out up here up top and then the brake master cylinder will go down with the vehicle with the rest of the line so you don't break your brake lines loose. Then you can see from in the fender liner here, right there, there's a 13 millimeter bolt cone from the front back. It's holding the fan shroud on. There's gonna be one in the driver's fender well, and then there's gonna be one in the passenger side fender well as well. And then there's gonna be a couple more on top before we can actually get that fan and inner shroud out. Here up top, there was the last 13 millimeter bolt holding this fan shroud on. So now we've got access to the fan clutch hub and we're gonna use our clutch hub remover tool, spin that off, it should be just standard left, or lefty loosey righty tighty standard right hand threads. Now we are ready to take out our cab bolts. So we've got one, two, go around the lift here, three, and then a smaller 18 millimeter one with a bolt and a nut in the front. That is on each side. You're gonna go ahead and pull those. Me, I have a uh, lift pump that I have also on the vehicle, so I had to pull the wire down for that one. I need to pull that one up through the top, so I'll get that one all done and handled, and then get these bolts out, and then we'll be lifting the cab up off this, guys. Moment of truth. We reset the feet, now we're gonna see if she lifts. As you see, the only thing we're having an issue with is back there, we've got some cables for my backup camera. So we're gonna see if we can get enough slack out of that and get the rest of the way. A hole, we got like just the right amount of clearance to slide them under the bed. Look at that. Would you just look at that? Gorgeous. Oh, tell you what, kind of getting old for this, but this is a lot of fun. This has been a, an eye opening experience, and I think that we did a pretty good job. We only had one casualty. If anybody picked it out in the video, what I forgot to say to take off, I said it to myself at one point, but the coolant lines that go to the heater core 
have little plastic fittings. Yep, snapped. So, I guess one casualty can't ruin the entire project, but we've got so much more getting ready to happen with this thing, guys. We've got turbo, big boy turbo, 68 millimeter, 6873, I believe it's gonna be, from uh, Ryan's Diesel Performance Service up in uh, Wisconsin, who is also putting on a badass truck meet here on June 22nd. Get the details on that one from Truckmaster's channel. Uh, I can put some links down in the description of that one or their Facebook page as well. We've got some other big things coming on. I'm gonna be doing individual videos for a couple of these things. We're gonna be taking the injectors out, shipping those off, company by the name of Bitterroot Diesel is going to be hooking us up on those, doing some 60 overs on the rebuild, and we've got some uh, really cool intake piping to uh, be able to see all of that. You guys are just going to have to wait and find out what we get for it. Appreciate you guys stopping in. If you guys liked it, make sure you hit a thumbs up button. If you have not already, make sure you subscribe as well. Turn on that bell notification so you get notified when I come out with cool awesome videos like this one. Appreciate it. As always, guys, you stay awesome.